Greetings to all of you in Jesus name and welcome to Bible in a year. This is day 299. This is the last day in the 200s. We're about to embark on the last set of hundreds when we get into 300. Ha, praise God. So the grace of God has carried us this far. We have endured this race. The Bible says that the race is not given to the swift or to the strong, but to those who endure. So that gives me hope that, praise God, even though I'm still a few days behind, I can catch up and still win. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to catch up. I'm going to win. I'm going to finish this year strong, having completed Bible in a year with all of you. Glory be to God. And for our benefit, this isn't just because we're doing this. This is, we've done an entire year of the Bible, sticking to it and allowing the word to transform us and change us. Think about, look back, how have you changed this year? How have you been transformed this year? What have you overcome? What have you battled? What have you faced? What has God taken you through? It's a good time to begin reflecting. And upon reflecting, we can prepare ourselves to get into the new year with new aspirations, new goals, new expectations, new pursuits, new petitions, absolutely more grace and brand new mercies from our Father. This is Bible in a Year. If this is your first time watching one of these videos, I want to first of all welcome you to Digital Disciple Ministries and invite you to join us on this journey through the Bible. Bible in a Year is a video devotional that follows a reading plan that can be found on the YouVersion Bible app. And the name of the plan is Bible in a Year 2020. So we've been reading every single day and I've been making videos that complement the reading, just sharing my meditations, my speculations. And oftentimes the Spirit of God has just manifested and taken this just somewhere wild. And we've had a good and blessed time. I've had a good and blessed time. So... Obviously, the year is almost coming to an end and you may not read the entire Bible in less than 30 days, but you can join us right here where we are and finish with us. Or you can always go back to day number one, start there, make a commitment to read the Bible every single day. All of the videos are available to you from the entire year up until this video and the the scripture verses and chapters are listed in the description section of the video so that you can do the reading and follow along with the videos if you wish. I highly recommend that you do that. I highly encourage you to do that because you're going to develop the discipline of not only reading your Bible and spending time with God, but you're going to learn how to think about the Bible. You're going to think about how you think about the Bible. Learn how to rightly divide the word, how to dig into the scripture, how to meditate on the word of God. And by doing so, hiding it in your heart. That's what we want. The word of God inscribed on the tables of our hearts or the tablets of our heart. <laughs> Hallelujah. So let's get into the Bible. I have several scripture verses, not too many that I've highlighted that I just want to talk about a little bit. And uh, I want to let you know that I'm reading from the King James Version of the Bible as is custom for me to do, but you can follow along with whatever version you have or whatever version you are comfortable with. And the Bible says in Psalms chapter 119. Yeah, we're going to be here for a few more days. And uh, I want to look at verse 105. And this is what the Bible says. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. This is a popular 
scripture right here. Many of you may know this. The word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. But there's a deep revelation in this and there are some things to consider when we look at this concept of a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. And this is what that means. The word of God will reveal the way that we need to walk. You're looking for direction. You don't know which way to go. The word of God will give you direction. The word of God will show you the path that you need to take. It will reveal in darkness what you need to do. First of all, the fact that there is a lamp present implies that darkness is also present. You don't need a lamp in the middle of the day. You don't use a flashlight outside in the middle of the day. You don't use a flashlight where there is light. A lamp is a light source that is utilized when there is no light. So oftentimes in this Christian journey, we come to a place to where it gets dark. We can't see anymore. We don't feel God anymore. Things don't make sense anymore. We had an idea of where we're going, how we're going to get there, and suddenly all of these things have come up and they've just caused utter chaos and darkness and now we can't see. We don't know where we are. I don't know how to get to where I'm going because I don't know where I'm at right now. I feel like I've been surrounded by darkness. This is where the lamp comes in. A lamp in darkness is a good thing because it begins to, the darkness conceals the path. You ever go hiking and then uh, hike into the evening and uh, twilight is transitioning and begins to get dark? Well, when the light fades away, the darkness begins to conceal the path. A lot of times we go through situations that hide the pathway that we've been walking on. We're headed in a certain direction. Yes, we have a destination. Absolutely. And glory to God. And the way to get there is through a path. A pathway has been beaten. But if the path is concealed by darkness, then we can get lost. Even if we're headed in the general direction of where we're going, if we're not on the path, we might miss some things. A path navigates perils and dangers. If you stay on the path, the path will lead you to a bridge that will allow you to cross a ravine. If you get off the path, you might come to the edge of a cliff. Danger. And in darkness, you cannot see the edge of a cliff. You can't see the holes. You can't see the traps in the darkness. So we need light. The word of God is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Where do we shine the light when we're traveling outside in the dark? We shine it at our feet in front of our, so we can see where we're going. And that's what the word is. The word will begin to lead us in the way. It'll highlight the next steps. Here's the kicker though. The lamp only expels so much light. Speculatively, speculatively speaking, let's just say that your lamp emits a light radius of five feet. So it radiates five feet in all directions, highlighting what's five feet in front of you. That means six or seven feet in, from, in front of you, there's darkness and you can't see. So in order for you to see the next few steps, you have to take the steps that have already been revealed. So if God has given you instructions saying, I need you to do this and do this, and you don't do that, and you're trying to see what's ahead, and you don't see what's ahead, don't be surprised. You didn't walk in the word that was given to you so that the next steps are not going to be revealed. Sometimes we just have to do what God tells us to do in order for us to know or understand the next step. Sometimes we have to move in what God said move in now in order for us to understand what's ahead. That's important. We're not going to see the whole picture. We're not going to see the whole path. 
Yeah, the Bible is a map. But how many of you know that maps limit details? There's not a lot of details on the map. You can't enjoy the journey by following a map. It just shows the path. It may lend some insight into things. Oh, you know, I need to know that there's going to be a tree up here on the left side. But the map doesn't show the intricacies and glory of the leaves. The map doesn't show you the birds flying into the branches. Maps don't show you that. Traveling the path shows you that. It's about the journey. It's about experiencing the journey. And God wants you to experience Him in this journey. That's what this is about. So when you take steps and you get to experience the, the path that's been revealed to you, it prepares you for the next steps. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Praise God. Psalms 119 and verse 108. Except I beseech thee, the free will offerings of my mouth, O Lord, and teach me thy judgments. Free will offerings of my mouth. That means I do it because I want to. I do it willingly. I don't feel obligated or forced to. It's a desire that I'm responding to. An act of my will backed up with a desire. The free will offerings of my mouth. Yeah, it's considered an offering. Praise is an offering. Sometimes it's a sacrificial offering when we don't feel like it or when we're hurting or when we're uh, looking at dark things. We're in a dark situation. We're facing darkness. Yeah, the free will offering becomes a sacrifice. But it's something that we can give and it doesn't cost us a dollar. No, not a dime. Let's slide into the New Testament. Titus chapter 1, and I want to look at verse 10. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision. Listen to this. Vain talkers. We've been talking a lot about vain talkers and deceivers and uh, foolish arguments, debates, getting ourselves ensnared. Paul was writing that to Timothy. He was telling Timothy that. And now here we're in Titus, another disciple of Paul, and he's telling Titus the same thing. Be careful of vain talkers. Deceivers, especially they of the circumcision, especially religious folks. Be careful not to get ensnared by religious folks. God, help me not to be religious. I get tempted. Ah, I get caught in the trap sometimes of being religious. But I don't endeavor to do so. So it's interesting that Paul has taken time to pour into his disciples, warning them, be careful of what you listen to. Be careful of who you listen to. Be careful of what you allow to enter into your ears. Not everybody is speaking truth. Not everyone is teaching the truth. This is why it's important for us to have an intimate relationship with God. That's also referring to His Word. We need to have an intimate awareness of what the Bible teaches. So that if we come across vain talkers, we can readily identify your vain speech. You ain't saying nothing. Deceivers. Well... I know you're speaking deception because I know what the Bible says. And don't forget, if you have the Holy Spirit 
You have the spirit of truth leading you and guiding you into all truth, into all ways of truth. Look at Titus 1 verse 14. Not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. Jewish fables, Jewish stories or myths. We looked that word up in the last video, fables. Let's, let's do that again. That was fun. Oh, here it is, fables. A false statement or belief. Myth and legend. Hmm. Jewish fables. That same word can be combined with some of the denominations. Pentecostal fables. Baptist fables, Catholic fables, Lutheran fables, Episcopalian fables, Evangelical fables, Jehovah Witness fables, Church of God in Christ fables, non-denominational fables. By the way, a non-denomination is a denomination of non-denomination, which in my opinion defeats the point, it's oxymoronic, but that's my personal opinion. Not giving heed to Jewish fables. Yeah, you know what? There are so many different variations of Christianity. We need to be careful and we need to learn how to distinguish fables from the truth. How do we do that? Know what the Bible says. <clears throat> how can we ensure what the Bible says? How can we learn? Join Bible in a year. Go back to video number one and watch them all. Binge watch Bible in a year. But don't just watch the video. Praise God. Thank you for watching the videos. And I pray that it's a blessing and, and I'm confident that it'll bless you. But do the reading. Read through the Bible in a year. Read the entire Bible. And after you've read the entire Bible, read it again. And again, and again, and again, and again. Read the Bible again. Hallelujah. So that you can identify fables, commandments of men that turn from the truth. We need to know, hey, listen, this is a commandment of men. And understand it to be that. Hey, don't eat pork. A commandment of men. That's what Paul said. Abstaining from meats. Command not to abstain from meats. Interesting that he would say that, being a Pharisee. Or maybe he was talking about the good meat, the kosher meat. That I don't know with certainty. Nevertheless, if you're at a church and they, they teach for a doctrine that on Tuesdays everybody wears a green sweater, that is a commandment of men. Give me Bible. I need to know what the word of a God. Where in the Bible does it say wear a green sweater on Tuesday? We need to, we need to be honest. Hey, listen, this, this is... The Bible doesn't adamantly say this. The Bible doesn't emphatically say this, but this, I say this and here's why. And this is not a biblical command. This is just wisdom that you can follow because we don't want to turn from the truth. The last thing that we as a people of God want to do in this age of deception is turn away from the truth. Let's not turn away from the truth, but let's embrace it by spending time in it every single day. Brothers and sisters, be exhorted. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may he give you peace. Check out the links to some videos in the corners here. If you have not yet subscribed to 
this channel, Digital Disciple Ministries, I want to welcome you to click the subscription link with my face on it and subscribe. Like this video, subscribe to the channel, share this with your friends and with your family members and watch the Lord bless them over and over and over and over again. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Now, until the rapture. Amen. Lord have mercy. Please have mercy on me. And if I done done somebody wrong, have mercy if you